Hi Queens, welcome to another episode of Morning Tea. Today's tea is Iced Gypsy Rose Tea by the Mountain Witch Tea Company. By the Mountain Witch Tea Company. Okay, so let's jump right into this. We have a doozy of a morning tea. So much has happened. McKenney. So in McKenney, Texas, in case you've been under a rock and you have not seen the video, I don't know, this cop, Casel Bolt or Case Bolt, Eric Case Bolt, I think that's his name. From what I gathered, this is the story I'm gonna lay out to you. There was a community pool in a neighborhood in McKinney, Texas. End of the school year party, a mother threw for her daughter. You know, they had friends over. So People were all around the pool and there was a lot of peep kids that were coming in the pool for this one pool party and Then there was a lot of kids that came who did not belong to the pool party and no one would let them in the gate to go to the pool and the security guard felt the situation was getting out of control so he called the police. So basically what happened is this girl put out that she was having a pool party on Twitter And so all these unwanted people showed up some of those unwanted people even decided they were gonna climb the fence and jump over Somewhere along the line. However, there was an altercation between an adult woman who was white and um, A group of girls maybe two or three one of them was white where she told them to go back to their section 8 housing It's not clear to me if the girl Girls that this white lady had the altercation with were from the unwanted group of kids coming to the pool party or they were from the kids who were invited to the pool party but she also said something to that to the white girl who was a part of that group and the white girl like said something back to her and the, so did the black girl and then she preceded the white lady to slap the black girl and the black girl I don't know why this white lady and if you see the footage of that why this white lady thought that she was in the physical condition to fight a 15 year old girl because she was not so that is one incident that happened during this kerfuffle the police show up and when the police show up they don't know who's invited who's not invited but they're getting they've gotten a call that there is an altercation and there are people kids who are at this pool party who will who are uninvited who will not leave so one of the police officers who is actually the sergeant in charge of this whole little situation gets there and he is trying to control the situation but he tries to control the situation in the most aggressive manner possible in fact when we the video that we see online of him handling the situation is the first shot is him either falling or tripping or something but he falls and trips into a flip, pops up and keeps running, like just is running around trying to like handle the situation and it seems very chaotic. But he definitely was running around and rolling on the ground like he was in Iraq, like he was on some sort of mission, you know, in a foreign country as opposed to in the city that he polices. Uh, he then attacks several children and when I say attacks, I mean grabs them, throws them to the ground, yelling at them, telling them to get their asses out of here. There's a lot of kids crowding around her like, what are you doing? We're at this pool party. Leave us like, okay, we'll leave, but they don't want to leave because this cop is being so aggressive. And it's like, why leave when this cop is being crazy and we can just watch him act a bloody fool and video record it. So most of them do. And the boy who's recording it is white. He's 15 years old. So it's almost like he's invisible. He's walking around recording this cop act a bloody fool and nothing is happening to him. No one's yelling at him, no one's asking him to leave, no one's telling him to sit down, no one's doing anything to him. And what he records that is the most disturbing is the cop is yelling at this girl in the bikini, right? He's yelling at her to leave and she's like talking shit as 15, 14 year olds are known to do, but she's leaving. She walks away and, and as she's leaving the scene, he grabs her, throws her to the ground, gets her on the ground. She's sitting there and she starts to scream, call my mama, call my mama, on God, call my mama. Everyone is around her like what is happening all her all her friends rush back to help her because he is attacking her When two boys who one of them is her cousin comes up to like with towels in their hands and like wanting to like help their their cousin which by law standards they shouldn't do but they're kids and they have adrenaline and their cousin is being attacked he proceeds to pull his gun out on him on the, on those boys. Now, there are two other cops on the scene in this video. Those cops 
aren't being aggressive or crazy. They're doing what Officer Eric says to do because he's the officer in charge at the time. But they see him pull his gun and it looks as though they run to him to try to get him to not do that, to like put his gun down because really he's got his knee on this girl's back. He turns around and he pulls out his gun, takes his knee off her back for a second. Then when his constituents run up to him to try to get him to put his freaking gun away, he tells them to go run after those boys. And then he proceeds to get back on top of that girl and knee her as though she's done something. She's done nothing. So what it looks like to me as a black woman watching this video is that he got tired of her talking shit so he was gonna teach her a lesson and put her face in the ground and let her know who's boss. That is what this entire video looks like. That there is a situation, he can't get in control of it and so he decides that he's gonna be as aggressive as he can be, hold down this little girl, this black girl, as though she means nothing and has no value. The entire time I'm watching this video, I'm so frustrated that I start to cry because I don't know how to help them. I don't know what to tell them. Is this a thing now in our community where we should teach our children how to deal with the police? Because they're not behaving in a manner that any other teenager would not have behaved in. Teenagers are defiant by nature. They're at this pool party. They're all of a sudden they're being detained and some of them are invited. Most of the ones who are being detained in fact are invited to the pool party. So it's so egregious and outrageous that all of this is happening. Meanwhile there is this white guy who is just standing around milling with his fucking polo shirt on and his jean shorts just standing there watching the cop letting the cop do this like there's several adults who kind of do that but this one fucker is just standing there allowing this shit to happen and i want someone to interview him so that he can talk about why he didn't see anything wrong with this cop's behavior because he just like was trying to help the cop in holding back the kids from like trying to help their friend. I mean, it just is like pandemonium and it's all due to this one cop running around like a freaking idiot. The The police department needs to be sued because this is so, it was just so reckless and so aggressive. It really was just so disgusting that I, I was so frustrated that I couldn't do a video on it because I was just too angry. Oof, right? I don't, Another black tragedy in America that has occurred. Um, I don't know if you guys know of Khalif Broder. I actually didn't know of Khalif until until his death, actually. Um, Khalif Browder was a 22-year-old man. At 16, was arrested. Yeah, arrested for stealing a backpack. And the police officer who arrested him said, okay, we're gonna take you down to the precinct. You should be there a couple hours and then you'll probably be released. It was on suspicion of stealing a, a backpack. So there was no proof that he stole the backpack. It was just on suspicion. So he gets into the car with the police officer. From there, from that arrest, he spent the next three years and in Rikers prison. The judge even told him, you have to you know, plead guilty and then we can push this through. But he was like, I didn't do it, so I'm not gonna plead guilty. And so because of shuffling and bureaucracy and paperwork, he ended up staying on Rikers Island in jail for three years, two of which were in um, solitary confinement for doing nothing. He was abused and he was tortured in jail. He tried to kill himself several times while he was in jail and the cops, I mean, the guards beat him for that. He eventually succeeded in killing himself yesterday. Being put in jail and tortured the way he was uh, severely depressed him and, and he says that before he went to prison, he wasn't, um, he, he never had any mental illness and he never felt this way. Um, but after the torture and the things that happened to him in prison, he was just never the same. Insanely corrupt jail system. And, um, you know, it's really, it's, a, it's really a, a, a tragedy. It, re it makes me so sad. Cause it's not like you can just come out and like go about your life. Getting a job is next to impossible, you know? And, and, and if you do, you have to settle for jobs that maybe you might not have even chosen to do had you not gone to jail in the first place. You know, my condolences goes out to the family of Khalif Browder. About 
is the biker gang. I never talked about it and it's because I forgot to talk about it on the week that it happened and then I just never talked about it after that. So you guys know about the Waco, Texas biker gang shootout that killed nine people and had 18 people injured. And initially, I don't know if it was the leaders of the bike gang or whoever they were, the initial like two people that they suspected were the heads of this sort of shootout were arrested and then set on bail and then like bounce. I'm not sure if they found them. I tried to look up information to see if they found these people who skipped bail. What happened? during that sweep is they arrested 170 bikers. And um, so the police, the Waco, Texas police knew something was gonna go down and they told this restaurant to n you know, shut down for that day or to not allow the bikers in that day. And the restaurant was like, no, the management there has lost their franchise and their liquid liquor license because they didn't heed police warning. But within that, 170 people were swept up. A few of which who weren't even involved with it at all. They just were in a biker club. So they got swept up and they were in jail for two and a half, three weeks on a million dollar bail that they could never pay. So they just ended up staying in jail for doing nothing. Um, part of me is like, oh, that sucks. Your rights were taken away. But then another part of me is like, well, I mean, this is what happens to black people all the time. So now these bikers are starting to see like what it's like to be a minority in this country, to have their rights taken away just because they were white, you know, in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I feel for them for having to be in jail for two and a half weeks on a million dollar bill, especially if they had kids. There was a big deal made of it when it happened, but now it's basically dead. I can barely find anything on it that's like worth really talking about. And that says something a lot of, that says a lot about this shootout. And it also could be because no innocent people were shot, just gang members, the bikers were shot. But um, I'm interested in see how this unfolds. So the next thing is the Dugar, the Duggars. So I didn't really, I feel like I watched that video for Morning Tea and I didn't really go into depth about the Duggars. So we all know that the oldest Duggar boy molested five children while he was a minor and they were young, um, that they were minors either. But it turns out that four of the kids that he molested were his siblings. I thought it was just two, which doesn't make it any less horrendous. One being five years old. Also, while they were asleep, which somehow is supposed to make it different or better. But my real concern is the fact that he might be a pedophile. It's a really hard thing to discuss because most people when they hear the word pedophile, their brain automatically shuts off and it just goes to a deep place of like animalistic anger. And I'm not saying you're wrong. Just what we don't talk about as a culture and what most people don't talk about as a culture is that pedophilia is not like a thing that just happens to a grown man. It's like the same way that you are sexually attracted by a, a man or a woman is the same way that they are sexually attracted to a, a prepubescent child. Pedophilia goes un target unknown and untalked about because we don't talk about it as a society. Dealing with people his age, he was dealing with like prepubescent children. This is not curiosity. This is like a 14 year old, 15 year old boy who's having sexual desires touching on little children. Like that's something that needs to be discussed because that's not going to go away. If that's who you are sexually attracted to, then that is who you are sexually attracted to and you need to learn to cope with it and not ever do that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it's a hard subject to talk about. But in order to not have victims, we need to help the people who have it. You get what I'm saying? Like there needs to be therapy and like whatnot for the, for the young boys and girls who have this attraction. There needs to be therapy for them from that age, from, from 13, 14, 15, 16, so that they know that their attraction is wrong and that their attraction, no matter how much it hurts them to not do it, they can't. And if their life is miserable from then on, I'm sorry, but your life is going to be miserable from there on because you cannot do that to someone, to a child. So is Josh Duggar a, a pedophile? Is he? If that's something, he needs to be in counseling right now so that he never does it again. Inexcusable. And his parents, I don't know what they were doing if they were trying to pray it away or whatever, but like, no, no. 
and to let that boy live in the same house with the people with the children that he abused is inexcusable the victim should never have to live with the people who attack them the news is really disturbing me like you send your kids to school and you send your kids to daycare or you send your kids to camp you send your kids to these places and sometimes the people who are there are predators and it just sucks and you just roll the dice because you don't want to stunt your kids from having experiences. Like, I don't want to stop my kids from going to camp, but like, you can't effectively and efficiently arm them with anything. Even if you're like, don't let anybody touch your private place. Like, they could try to not let somebody do it. They could fight that person off, yes, but the attack still happens and the attack is still traumatic. It doesn't matter if they actually succeeded, it's still trauma to even have somebody attack you in general, you know? like. It's just such a crazy world and everyone wants to make it seem like it's a new thing. Like, oh, people and children didn't get attacked in my day. No, they did. They just didn't talk about it because we didn't have psychology back in your day. <laughs> or if we did, it was frowned upon heavily. Like there are people who are probably victims of all kinds of different abuses um, in their lives and people that they've known and we just haven't talked about it. And so now in this day and age, we're finally talking about things and abuse is starting to finally get put on the forefront and all these older people are acting like shit didn't happen in their days but it did it just didn't make the front page of news you know it that's not what made the front page people weren't talking about their dirty family secrets like that it's just so frustrating Okay, guys, that's it for morning tea. I hope you guys, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone feels great after watching this video. I know I do. <laughs> um, but that's what's happening in the world. I mean, there's so much more politically happening, but I can't even talk to you about it. I'm going to try to get another video up this week. I don't even know why I'm saying that I'm not going to get another video up this week. Hopefully nothing crazy happens next week so that my next week's morning tea can be more political so I can let you guys know what's happening, who the other Democratic nominees are, um, who the Republican nominees are, where they they stand what's going on what's up with jeb bush like you know that stuff so um thank you guys so much for watching have a fantastic day